Hello, there's an object that's probably going to pass super near Earth in the year 2032. And when I say probably going to pass near Earth, the other option isn't that it passes far away from Earth, it's that it hits Earth. And 2032 is not that far from now, and the object is big enough that people are concerned about this. But there's a bunch of context, if you have heard about this, that you probably do not have, that I would like to give you. And the first is the most relaxing piece of information, which is that this object is not in any way big enough to alter the course of life on Earth. One of the stats I keep hearing is this would be like a thousand times more powerful than the bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And that is true, but it lacks context. The first piece of context is that we have built bombs this big. We have in our current nuclear arsenal bombs that are big enough to do this. We have exploded bombs that big on Earth before. We've done them in the ocean, we've done them on the land, we've done them in the air. So the big difference is that the bombs that we dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, we've dropped in the middle of cities, which is something that really happened. And we're still here on Earth living together. Oh my god. So the current NASA projection is that there is a slightly more than 2% chance that this object will hit Earth. An important additional piece of context because we don't really feel this way because we live our lives where we live them. Most of the Earth is empty. So about 3% of the Earth is cities um, and a, a lot of the Earth is the ocean. Now we actually know where this object is if it were to land on Earth, we have like an idea of where it would hit. It would hit around the equator and it would hit in an area that stretches from South America all the way to India. It wouldn't hit in all of those places. It would hit in one of those places and we don't know which one it would be. Another piece of context that it's valuable to know, if this happened 50 years ago, we would have no idea. Not only would we have nothing we could do about it, we had, would not know that it was happening. Over the last 50 years, we have built up an asteroid monitoring system or like an object monitoring system that figures out where stuff is and where it's headed so that we can know when stuff like this is happening. So the reason we're like, if you're stressed out at all by this, the reason you're stressed out is because you know something might happen when 50 years ago, this probably all would happen and we would have no idea that it passed by Earth. No one would ever know anything happened. Or we would find out later and by the time later happened, we'd have, you know, we'd ha like it would be so close that it would be easier to get data on it and we would know that it wasn't going to hit Earth. So this is part of what's stressful about modern life is having too much information. So this is information that if I could control your mind, I would make you not know about it because it is not at a point now where it matters. A uh, third piece of useful context is that just because it can't destroy the earth doesn't mean that it can't kill a lot of people. So if people are saying like, oh, finally, this is going to put us out of our misery, that's kind of like wrong in two different ways. First, because it's not going to end life or suffering on Earth. Second, because it will just increase suffering on Earth. All the people who are injured, all the people who die, all the people who love the people who are injured and died, that's all suffering that we don't need uh, and that we don't want. So I don't know. I have broader thoughts on the please put us out of our misery narrative that is especially, I will say, prominent on the left and I think kind of cringe and maybe shitty. But that's for another video. This one's not about that. Uh, but important context is one, we like any other time in human history, we wouldn't know about this. And it's good that we know about it, but it's also stressful that we know about it. Two, also any other time in human history, and I mean like, not even very far back. We would not know what to do about this, but we live in a moment where we have very powerful rockets that could potentially launch a mission to stop this. And we also have done a first test, it was called the DART mission, that actually altered the path, the orbit of an object in space. We've done it before. It's like we have data on whether it's possible. And in, in fact, we have found that it is possible. And I will just say like, there's a thing that bugs me about this, which is that when there's a 2% chance of it hitting earth, then people will say, and then if an object this size hits smack in the middle of the largest population center on earth, X number of people would die. But you've taken a probability of 2% and then multiplied that by a probability of like 0.01% that it will hit that specific city or by like 3% that it will hit a city at all. And that's a much smaller probability that you definitely shouldn't worry about. If this was a big enough object that like if it hit the middle of the ocean, it would create a tsunami that would be a huge problem, then that would be a thing to worry about. But it's not that big. It's like if it hit in the middle of the ocean, like the only people who would die would be like suicide cult members who went out there to be in a boat and get obliterated by an asteroid because that's how you meet your alien overlords or something. 
or just people who thought they were gonna like get a great picture but did the math wrong or got blown off course and you know what time that means it is it's time to play connections let's just do today we got ant aroma shower bouquet vase or vase pepper nose stop uncle tomato truce dust scattered note either mercy it's either not ether i saw a couple of things in there i had like scatter pepper shower dust that's great good start everybody let's get those clumped up that's good enough for me. I can remember where those are. And then we've got uh, Truce and Mercy. And this is like, uh, stop. And uh, and I saw another one. Uncle. Oh, this, I'm going to, I've got to roll right through this one, you guys. I was going to blast this one into space like a rocket to destroy an asteroid. And then we've got Aroma Bouquet. That sounds good. Aroma Bouquet Nose. Note. Is this like wine? Th I hate that. Oh my God. That's so bougie. New York Times cannot stop being the bougiest institution on earth. And then that leaves us with truce, scatter, shower, vase, either, stop, note, nose, mercy, aroma, pepper, ant, and dust? No, not miss. Tomato. Vase, either. Ah, this word is where uh, they're pronounced two ways. In English, vase, vase, either, either, tomato, tomato, and aunt. Ah, uh, famously, famously pronounced different. I don't know if vase and vase are famously pronounced different ways. Tomato, tomato, either, either, and aunt, I guess. Let's call the whole thing off. Which is going to be next? I don't know. Um, truce. Uh, maybe the one with uncle in it? Or is it the wine one? Let's go with the wine one. That's weird. Oh, come on. Uh, I think the truce, uncle, stop. Mercy. Do you guys know about that term? Uncle, uncle. Like you call uncle. It's like the safe word that everybody invented for some reason. In the 50s, they created a safe word and the safe word was uncle. Uh, ah, enough. And then sprinkle. Just to like get a little smattering. To sprinkle. That word I said. Okay. Well, that's great. Thanks everybody for watching this video. You're not going to explode. 